Dungeons & Dragons Online is a free-to-play fantasy MMORPG that initially released back in 2006. Since then, the game's had years worth of content updates, new dungeons, raids, stories, zones to explore, puzzles and challenges. A somewhat recent addition to DDO a few years ago was its Hardcore League, which is basically a permadeath mode where you start fresh and try to progress as far as you can without dying for special rewards. In this video though, we're going to be revisiting the normal version of the game and see if anything has changed since the last time I played it, as well as see how well it holds up in 2022. But first, sponsor. Warhammer 40k Inquisitor Martyr Ultimate Edition is now available on both Xbox Series XS and PlayStation 5. This epic Warhammer action RPG allows you to take on the role of Inquisitor, one of the most powerful agents of the Imperium, operating out of the Caligari Sector, a region overrun with heretics, mutants, and demons of chaos. In this game, you'll be purging the Chaos Scourge either solo or with up to four friends with local co-op also available on the console versions. Choose a playstyle that suits you from one of the game's four Inquisitor classes, obtain powerful equipment, specialise your Inquisitor with various skill trees and tons of build possibilities, as well as enjoy native 4K support with higher resolution textures. Warhammer 40k Inquisitor Martyr Ultimate Edition comes with four years worth of updates, with over 25 pieces of DLC, so if you're a Warhammer fan and you've never played this game, then boy, you've certainly got an adventure ahead of you. Click the link in the description below to buy Warhammer 40k Inquisitor Martyr Ultimate Edition now, and jump into one of the most content-rich Warhammer RPGs ever made. Buy it now. Dungeons and Dragons Online in 2022, let's jump into it. If I remember correctly, this game has a lot of different classes. So for melee, you've got the Fighter, Barbarian, Paladin, which comes in two forms, Paladin or Sacred Fist, or the Monk. Spellcasters, we've got the Sorcerer, Cleric, Dark Apostate, Wizard, Favored Soul, Druid, and the Warlock. Specialist classes, Ranger, Rogue, Bard, which can also be a Storm Singer, Artifactor, which comes with a Metal Mech Dog, or the Alchemist. Two of these classes you need to pay money to unlock. You've also got Iconic classes, which are basically like hero classes, which don't start at level one. So you've got the Shadar Kai Assassin, Purple Dragon Knight, Morning Lord, Cleric, the Blade Forged Paladin, the Deep Gnome, the Asimir Scourge, Tiefling Scoundrel, Razor Claw Shifter, and the Tabaxi Trailblazer. Looks like a bit of a Wukong style character. You know, for once, let's be a Paladin. I love the Paladin archetype, but I never play Paladins in my first impressions videos. It's Paladin time. Aside from just being a Paladin, we've got three different paths Protector, Flame of Justice, or the Truthbringer. So one's probably more defensive, one's probably more support, and one's probably more DPS. I want to be an aggressive paladin. This game has a lot of races. Asimir, Dragonborn, Drow Elf, Dwarf, Elf, Corv... Can't be bothered to pronounce that. Wood Elf, Gnome, Halfling, Half Elf, Half Orc, Human, Tabaxi, Tiefling, Shifter, Warforged. Male Dwarf Paladin, that's a good archetype. Find the biggest beard we can possibly have. This dwarf can have spectacles. Interesting. Big old eyebrows. I, I can't have the glasses. I don't know what it is, but a dwarf with glasses, it just doesn't look right to me. So what he needs, a big fuck off manly scar across his face. That's more like it. Big, fat... Eggplant. Bro, how is that name taken? Sausage Man Power. Can we have that name? We actually can. <laughs> What's wrong with me today? What a stupid fucking name. Alright, Sausage Man Power, level one paladin. He's in his rags. Let's enter the world. Zoned into the world, and like many other MMORPGs, we have started shipwrecked on a shore. Why do I feel like such a giant dwarf in relation to this person? Like Feels like our proportions are off. I look like an orc standing next to this guy. Follow me. All right, lad. I'm gonna follow our little friend. Come on, follow me. Yes, I am following you. So smash open some barrels. Get ourselves some coin. These people don't seem to mind that I'm just vandalizing their camp. Open Sweet. the inventory with I. Equip the sword. User interface extremely outdated. Smash every single crate and barrel we're gonna come across for the rest of this video because of course we are. Can I jump off here? No invisible barrier. Hello, barrel. Thought you could escape me, did you? Really? You put a barrel all the way over here on this rock? Made me excited because it was a hidden barrel and there was nothing in it. Absolutely baited. Maybe there's something secret up here. Ooh! There actually is. The developers seem to have recognized that it's fun to smash crates and get hidden treasure. 
I am the Paladin Sausage Man. A dragon attacks my ship. That's a great name. Sausage Man. Maybe that should be my name in every first, MMO going forward. Surround. Dungeons and Dragons, I think, was one of the first MMOs with climbable ladders. This game also has mantling, which, even today, isn't something that every MMO has. The movement feels fairly responsive, to be fair, like just general movement, jumping, running around. Pretty cool start to the game, really. It kind of simulates a dungeon experience, but with NPCs, teaches you all the basic mechanics. It doesn't take long at all to get to the dungeon part of this Dungeons and Dragons game. Treasure chest or mimic treasure chest? If I pay money, I can re-roll loot. Interesting. You fill a draft. Okay, so there's obviously a hidden passage here. Use the search skill to locate it. Search skill. It's quite cool, really, that this game has the secret walls where you can search them and it's like a hidden path. It's kind of old school RPG and not too many modern MMOs actually have that. Another player here, an elven archer. And here we've got a another dwarf player. Looks like a spellcaster, though. So that's nice to see. Even in the starting area, there are still people playing the game. To be honest, I didn't expect to see many other players. I just assumed everyone would be at endgame or something. Next quest, enter the crypt. Talk to the crypt keeper. Death to create the crypt even more. I'm sure that's gonna give me some good karma. Sarcophagus. Yeah, fuck you, sarcophagus. I'm still paranoid from opening every single chest because a few weeks ago I played Neverwinter and there was a mimic in that game that scared the shit out of me and it's just made me paranoid of every chest in every game. Finish vandalizing the crypt. Rewarded with some copper. We also completed all the optional objectives, so now we're gonna finish adventure and that's gonna recall us outside of the dungeon. Amulet of the brute. Yeah, I look like more of a brute. Equip the amulet. We got some new robes. Long sword of double strike. That seems like an upgrade. Longsword actually has a pretty cool effect on it as well. Surprised to have such a cool sword for the start of the game. Small brown spider. Mate, if that's a small brown spider, what's a big brown spider look like? Oh, should we do this mission in first person to help me get over my fear of spiders? Right, we're not scared of spiders. Look at it. Look at it, Craig. This is something that I always forget that Dungeons and Dragons Online has puzzles. I think the last time I played it, it was something that really impressed me about the game because a lot of modern MMOs don't really have decent puzzles and I don't really know why. Stuff like this definitely makes the game more engaging than it would be otherwise. This and we've lit up all of the corners. Puzzle complete. We can take the scroll. So now I'm level one rank four. So the way this game's leveling system works is a little bit different to normal games, I guess. I wonder when I'm going to unlock some abilities. Perhaps I've already unlocked abilities but the game hasn't notified me to put them on my hotbar. Bunch of XP, level 1, rank 5 now. Bags are getting nice and clogged up, just the way I like it. This sword has a plus 3 swim and plus 3 jump on it. It's quite random. You don't typically see stats like that in MMOs. Alright, let's take the two-handed great axe and see if we can actually use it. I'm not entirely sure we can. Doesn't sound like much of a paladin weapon to me. Oh! Never mind. I'm a great axe wielding paladin now. I just get a quest to open the store. Mate, really? You're gonna give me a quest to open the DDO store and you're gonna take me to a web page? You haven't even got an in-game store. I hate it when MMOs do this. So we've got frozen ice here and it looks like we're gonna have a little puzzle. Twist the valve and that's gonna turn on the light. The valve here. Both valves turned, lights are on, the door's unlocked. And both of these valves unlock this door. And now what? Hit the gong. We hear a rumble from a larger room. Oh, wait, maybe it's actually in here. So if we close the door, that trap's gonna stop being annoying. Hit the valve, do it again, do it again. Try hitting the gong. Okay, second strike cracks ice. Oh, okay. Quite a cool little puzzle, really. Operate the lever, get ambushed. I appreciate that even though I'm early in the game, I've already encountered a puzzle that kind of stumps me for a little bit. It doesn't take too long until you get to the point where you feel like you need to use your brain. The thing I appreciate about this game is that it makes you want to explore every inch of a dungeon. Like maybe there's a hidden room or some treasure or something. It's quite cool. And now I've got another puzzle. And it's done. Quest complete. Rank 6. Some of these early puzzles, surprisingly engaging. I can't even imagine how complex they're going to get get later on into the game with some of the end game content. So as a dwarf, it seems like the game is going to give me clues as to where there's hidden pathways. That's pretty cool. If I remember correctly, the last time I played this game, I didn't have such clues. So I guess this might be one of my ratios. We beat them off. Wait, we, we what? That didn't sound right. 
As far as a solo MMO experience goes, this game is really good. It very quickly engages your brain early into the game and has you fully exploring things and paying attention to your environment. Yes, early on the combat is absolutely basic, just spamming left click, clicking things down, but it's the environment and the interacting with the story and the puzzles that keeps you engaged. I can't really think of any other modern MMOs that's given me that same feeling. When I logged in today, I got a little notification saying that I've got points to spend, so let's do that. This game has quite the talent tree. You've got tons of different things here that you can spec into. You've got your race talent tree, Slayer of Evil. That sounds good. I've spent all my points. I've specced into like three different trees. Probably far from optimal, but I don't think we need optimal. Into the next dungeon. Very eerie. That's pretty cool. I like that the dungeons in this game have like optional objectives where you can get bonus loot in these treasure chests for fully exploring the dungeon. I didn't find the key required to open this door whilst playing this, so I guess it pays to fully explore your surroundings in this game. That's cool. So if you fall off a ledge like this, you can like hang and pull yourself up. Really cool thing to have for such an old MMO. So many modern MMOs don't even have this option. World of Warcraft never added anything like that, for example. Into the next dungeon. This one looks like a cave. Ooh, is there going to be a dragon inside this one? Come, there isn't much time. Oh, some voice acting on this one. Yeah, this is a really big dungeon. Bigger than any other dungeon that I've gone in so far. Lever number one. Lever number two. If I jump, will I die? No. Not just die, but super die. Minus 55 HP. You may revive in any of the ways. Except the resurrection. Okay, can't do that. Spirit cake from the store. Surely the game's given me a spirit cake as a new player. Spirit cake. Okay, there it is. <sighs> Right, lesson learned. Don't jump from great heights, you will die. Descending deeper and deeper. Oh, there he is. I mean, that's what Dungeons and Dragons is all about. Finding a dragon inside of a dungeon. Wait, I actually don't think that I get to fight it. My friends are fighting it. I think I need to find an artifact. So they're all having fun fighting a dragon and they've just sent me off to look for an artifact. It's an important job, but it's not the glory that I was looking for. The ground quivers, you see a tunnel beneath the ice. Oh, wait. You can actually see the dragon from beneath the ice. That's really cool. There it is. There's the dragon. Are we going to take him on? Wait for the opportunity to strike. At last. This. Okay, so this is the artifact that I've been looking for. Lots of treasure around the room as well. Classic fantasy dragon. The dragon is locked in a contest of wills. So now I can smash the crystal. Dragon reasserts its will and looks very annoyed. I can see that. Oh, and he's dead. Okay, meet up with the party. We all good, lads? Quest complete. That was the longest quest I've had so far. Pretty cool. So now we've finally made it to the next zone. Tons of quests, tons of vendors. Let's see if there's any other players. Yes, indeed, there are other players. Beautiful elven woman over here with a water baby. Ah, we got another player here, and this one has a mount. Level 21. This dwarf looks fairly endgame in terms of his armor. He looks like a dwarven version of the Lich King, especially with those skulls on his boots. Okay, this is probably the coolest player I've seen. Wait, you're only level three. You look like pure evil energy. Another player, level five. Yeah, this seems to be the main city where everyone's hanging out. That's, uh, oh, these are bigger spiders than the one we've dealt with in the beginning of the game. A little bit more unsettling. I'm, I'm not a fan of this. They've heavily infested the area of the height. Don't use the word infested. No one wants to read the word infested. I've never read the word infested and felt happy. Sometimes I wish that fantasy worlds actually existed. Like when I was younger, I really wished that I could be in the world of Harry Potter. I was absolutely obsessed with it. But if you take more than five minutes to think about it, in all fantasy universes, giant ass spiders like that actually exist. I think that's gotta be a nope. Even if magic is real, and you can really be a wizard. I think I'm gonna have to pass. You flinch as an uns... Oh God, the reading distracted me from looking for traps. Brilliant, big old brown spider. It's not where I wanna be, is it? Just run through the trap. That'll burn the spider, surely. 
We good? Do you ever wonder what insects used to look like during the prehistoric ages? Did giant arachnids used to exist, for example? Food for thought. Another question for anyone who's made it this far in the video. If dragons genuinely existed, do you think humans would be extinct or do you really think we would have found a way to deal with them? I'm not sure why I'm wondering all of these strange things today. You must now find a class trainer and improve your skills. Right. Advance to the next level as a paladin. Paladin feats. That's going to give me some abilities. Lay on hands and divine grace. Okay. And now I've got four more action points to spend. Okay, that makes sense. I'm starting to understand now. Played a bit on the dwarf. Let's go try out one of these special characters. Right, so next we're going to create an iconic character. And the one that I've got unlocked is the Asamir Scourge. Looks pretty cool. Customize my bit. I've just started my character. I don't know what half of these things do. Now I need to pick my feats. So these these iconic characters have a lot more things you can customize when you start them, it seems. Can I just choose a recommended path? With all of these options I've been given, I don't think these iconic classes are really intended for new players. It's like instantly overwhelming. Favored enemy, Reptilian. All right, there's Massimir Scourge. We'll call him Groundwater Collector. <laughs> Out of all the MMOs I've done first impressions on, the names that I've come up with in this one are probably some of the worst in all of my years on YouTube. Groundwater Collector, level one. Let's go. So I've started as a level one in some kind of inn. Right hook, left hook, kick him in the balls. My dude's had a few lessons of Muay Thai, it seems. Talk to Budget Gandalf. Accept Ranger training. So four action points to spend. Arcane Ranger, go on then. Even starting out on one of these characters is pretty confusing. Like you need to know the fundamentals of the game before you really play an iconic character. Advance to level 15, leave the garret. Can you just make me level 15 without me needing to do all of this every time? It's a bit of a ball ache. Like. If I just leave, am I going to be level 4 or will that be like a quick way of getting to level 15? That's going to take like 30 minutes otherwise. No, I need to manually get to level 15 by talking to him for about 30 minutes and choosing my abilities. It's kind of sapped my willpower to play, honestly. I'm going to wrap up the video here. I'm not going to understand what I'm doing. Jumping on a max level character for this game. Too confusing for me as a new player. There's a metric crap ton of abilities. I'm going to need hot bars on hot bars. It's going to take like an hour to set up. These iconic characters, clearly just not meant for new players. So after revisiting Dungeons and Dragons Online in 2022, my thoughts are as follows. The main thing the game's known for, its dungeons with multiple different pathways, hidden treasure and puzzles to solve, still holds up pretty well as a fun, engaging experience. I find it surprising that after all these years, there isn't really another MMO that has dungeons that feel the same as DDO. The game has a ton of options when it comes to race and class choice, with racials actually being quite impactful. The game's free to play. Quests have failure states to them, which for some MMOs isn't always the case. The game's been out a long time, so there's years worth of content to work through. The game does still maintain a small dedicated player base. There's hardcore permadeath leagues for players that want to challenge themselves. And I like how the main story is narrated with text and voiceover in places. The user interface is extremely outdated. This is something you'll notice immediately as you open your character sheets and inventory. If you're really bad at the game, you're gonna need to spend money to resurrect or start long missions again. This might rub some people up the wrong way. For the first few hours of gameplay, you're basically just left clicking every single mob down with no need to use abilities. As a new player, opening up the talent tree was very overwhelming. Some players might like this, whilst others are just gonna Google viable builds. And as you'd expect from such an old game, visually it's quite outdated by today's standards as a whole. Overall, I think it's time we got a modern version of Dungeons & Dragons Online. It's a beloved IP and the dungeons, narrative and questing feel quite unique. The game's clearly well designed, otherwise it wouldn't still exist after all these years. For me personally though, it's just a bit too outdated, and something about the audio makes me feel sleepy at times. A great game to relax with, or to play before bed as a cure for insomnia. But that's it for this video guys, as always let me know your thoughts on Dungeons & Dragons Online in the comments below, and would you like to see a modern take on this game? Would Dungeons & Dragons Online 2 be something you'd be interested in? Help support the channel by praising the algorithm gods with the like button, social media on screen, and I'll see you in the next one.